We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. You can send your questions to questions at tabletopbellhop.com or head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Ask the Bellhop. Uh, social media works too. We're everywhere as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. You can pretty much type in your social media site of choice slash Tabletop Bellhop and hit us. Now, the best ways for questions come through the website because they get nice and logged and I get a notification when they show up and I get a special email and all this stuff, which is awesome. But I'm not going to say no to a question asked anywhere. Tonight, we have two different questions that both deal with similar game night problems. So we've decided to group them together for tonight's topic. Up first, Ranch B writes, what to do when you have a steady weekly group? As time goes by, you've got one player who is getting less willing to play other games. After mm -hmm. four players all say, ooh, let's play that, player five is the only one doing, often doing the, I don't think I'd like that. Let's play something else. Oh, thanks for the question, Ranch. Uh, this is definitely something I have seen many times, uh, both with like my regular game group that gets together all the time, as well as private or public gaming events. Actually, it's to be honest, more common at public gaming events, but it is definitely something that occurs quite often. And I think we're going to have some ideas to help you. Second, David Wood writes, do you have any solution for the RPG picky eater? I'm defining picky eater as the sort of player who only ever plays one type of character or only ever plays one type of game. Uh, it doesn't handle the paradigm shift to a different system or setting well at all. Mine in this case is a power gamer, prefers <laughs> superhero systems, and only suffers the minimal amount of story required <laughs> to get into fights, gain enough experience to buy new power. Now, there's another one I've definitely seen many times over the years uh, on both sides of the screen as a GM running the game and as a player and having the other player in or another player in the group who's kind of stuck in their way. So thanks for the question, David. Now, yes, these are two separate questions, but really, to me, both of these are talking about a game group and a social situation where one person out of the group is looking for a totally different experience from the rest of the group. And that is something that is surprisingly common, like possibly always common. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's definitely uh, something that, that hits a lot of people. And I, the root of it, in many cases, is fear. Uh, you know, we've got the fear of change or fear of something new or related to the other two is just the fear of looking bad or incapable of doing something other than they're really good, what they feel they're, they're yeah. comfortable and good at. It's a comfort thing. Yeah. So I, I don't know. To, there's, there's a few different ways to look at this, and we're probably going to wind all over the place here. So just, just fair warning where we don't have a one-track answer at this point. This is something I, I left open up to discussion, and it is pretty awesome that it ends up that, that David's actually in our chat room tonight. So thank you for joining us for your, your answer. So we can we'll get to hear live if, if we do this one right or we screw it up. So I think the first thing you need to do, and this is for both cases, is try to find out why. Why why do the people only want to play one thing? Is it fear, like Sean said? Is it is it they're, they're scared to try something else? Is it a comfort level thing? Are they just more comfortable doing this? Is it someone who is scared, not scared to learn something new, but like learning's work. To be honest, like like having to learn a new game, a new system is work, and not all people want to have to work to have fun. If I just show up and I play Catan every week, I already know how to play. I don't have to learn anything new. I just sit down, I play, I have fun. There's no there's no effort required. So that can be it. If they just want to chill and relax and have a good time with friends, if that's what they're there for, is not the game, but the social aspect of hanging with friends, maybe they don't want that investment. Because especially with an RPG, if you were switching RPG systems, there is a usually, I will say usually, there are some obvious modern example or exceptions to this, but usually there's a significant learning curve. Even just, same with even playing a different character type, right? If you, especially superhero games, because except for the fact that there's now like masks, the, until very recently, there were not light superhero games. Every superhero game had powers and how powers work and time tracks and people that act at super speed versus people who don't and very complicated point by system superhero games have never been light and fluffy yep. uh, 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 until now like i said nowadays with power video apocalypse games like icons and games like masks it's it's there has been that shift but it's definitely a thing so even if you're playing a superhero game switching from the brawler to the speedster is a learning curve yep absolutely 
and again, it, it's really, it's really a, uh, hard to say what might be causing the problem. Uh, like yeah. for me personally, again, when we're, we're talking board games, I'm pretty much to try anything once. I mean, you play, yeah. you'll, you'll, you'll say, Hey, do you want to play this game? And the only reason I'm probably going to say no is, Oh, I'm way too tired for that much brain burn. Or, mm -hmm. uh, I just played the, you know, killer level four, you know, four difficulties in a row. I would really love to play beans right now. Cause I need yeah. a break. You know, that's the sort of reason why I'm going to say no, but on a regular ongoing basis, pretty much up to try everything. Uh, another thing you might watch out for is there could be another reason separate from what we've talked about, why they might be saying no. And this could be a group interaction problem. And this is something that we get, we've talked about multiple times and it gets into your session zeros and your comfort levels with everybody in there. There's always a possibility that they may not like the way somebody at the table behaves if you're playing mm -hmm. you know, worst case scenario monopoly hey look you know i don't want to play monopoly and they don't want to say that you know billy bob is a complete jerk every time we play monopoly mm -hmm. it's just not a fun experience they just say mm, i don't really like playing that game uh so that's another no, that's underlying fair. underlying issue that could be when it comes to board games um or even rpgs you know if if behavior of other people is pushing them away from from the uh the yeah that's that's very fair especially with different styles of games right like board games we 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 have whole episodes on dealing with problem players with um talking about confrontation at the table and competitiveness but a lot of it could be people who are scared of com uh, the competitive nature of the game right like let's play this because we always let's, let's keep playing pandemic i want to keep playing pandemic and they're like no let's play i trying to think a uh, risk i a terrible example in a way because I'm going for a perfect traditional game, but well, or, or let's try to think of Cry Havoc, right? So an in-your-face confrontational, you are going to be against each other players, and they may be like, you know what, no, let's just keep playing Pandemic, and it ends up that they just don't like confrontation in the games, and for whatever reason, are worried about bringing that up. Which gets to like Sean saying with Session Zero, and a lot of that just, it, it's almost old-school feeling. Like, people were scared to explain why they liked or didn't like things or what they liked or what preference they wanted and there was like this mentality that like i have a game night and because i have a game night that's sacred and i don't want to do anything to possibly threaten that game night and part of that has to do with the fact that gaming was definitely looked down upon and not as common as it is now and it used to be you didn't have the internet so if you knew the five people in your city the game that was it and if you wanted a game you were stuck with them we're past that now for one, more people out there game, and for two, there's the internet, and if you can't game in person, you can definitely find a game online, and I almost guarantee you, unless you're really in the middle of nowhere, there are probably other gamers with similar styles to your type in your area somewhere, and I think that a lot of it stems from that, the, the I don't want to rock the boat, but I'll rock the boat enough to say, no, no, let's just take play what we were playing already, because it's what I know. Like, you're willing to take that step, but not take why. Yeah, and again, and, and this does in some ways play into the fear again. In this place, it's it's fear of confrontation at the party, at the table, right? You at don't the want table. to interpersonal. Offend, you don't want to you don't want to offend anyone else at the table, so you try to be, you know, you do the Canadian thing and and you're overly polite. Yes. And it comes off the wrong way. Uh, you're being polite, you're trying not to hurt anyone's feelings, but in doing that, you may be upsetting everyone else who would really rather just have an answer. Um, you know. It, it would be better to know the truth uh, once than listen to you yeah, waffle like, every like, week. That one conversation is not going to be fun, but it's probably better than having a lousy time every week, right? Like the, yeah. that one time that that one, you know, I, I can't think of the term coming to the table. It's not the term I was looking for, but whatever that that one moment where you kind of like, look, let's sit down. Let's talk about this. So forgetting the why they want to play the one game. I think another part of it and another way to try to, to help deal with this is to find out what it is about that one thing that they like. So yes, they always want to play superhero games because they want to power up. 
well, is that what they like? Is it the, is it the power fantasy? It is it the leveling up? Is it the math they like? Do they like character building? Do they like min maxing? Do they like being able to plan a character ahead ten levels and have everything scheduled? Or for board games, do they like playing Catan because they love the engine building of it and they really like the fact that the dice determine randomly what resources you get every round? And I think that's part of it is trying to figure out what it is they like about that thing. And then as a group, perhaps presenting things that still have that part of the thing, the thing they like, whatever they're getting out of the game they do enjoy, maybe you can introduce them to another game that's similar or has that. If they so, if they love the superhero games and they it's 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 the, the the huge characters and they like being this massive powerful thing and yeah you know I possibly the only time I'll ever say this in my life look at Palladium, um, <laughs> but uh, you know oh, it's there, totally true yeah yeah there, there's other games out there that aren't in that same genre but still give you that you know I'm gonna be the min max I'm gonna power up I'm gonna kill and and but maybe you're a barbarian or maybe you're a mech or you know. There's, there's other ways to, to get that same experience of the power cycle with another game. See, I, like what you can do, though, is you can suggest things that are similar to what they like, right? So if they like D&D, right, and they, and they like it, so you subtract the Pathfinder, right? It's just that little step to the side, or maybe Adventures in Middle Earth. Or if they're really into Cyberpunk, maybe you push them towards Shadowrun. And then the next time, you go a little bit further from Shadowrun, you move over to On the Edge. And then from On the Edge, maybe you push them a little, and you just, you keep trying to incorporate that thing they like, right? You don't want to pull people too far from their comfort zone. Again, assuming that's the main reason why this person doesn't want to shift, is they're comfortable and having fun with what they're doing. They like Catan, find out what it is what they like. If it's the trading aspect, maybe show them Bonanza or Chinatown. If it's the dice-based resource production, maybe take a look like Valeria Card Kingdoms. Like, we've actually got an entire episode about if your player likes Catan and won't play anything else, here are some other games to suggest. And we basically broke it down into, if they like this aspect of Catan, check this out. Now, that's way more specific than this. This is more generic. But just an idea of what you can do to try to shift them over. And then... Similarly to that, uh, you know, if you started off as a Catan group, but, you know, it's been a year and you guys are all trying to switch things up now. So you're trying a different game. Maybe they want to be in a Catan group and that's not your group anymore. Yeah. Then maybe it's time for them to move on. Uh, maybe the, the problem isn't that you've got a picky eater, eater in your group. The problem is that they don't belong in that group anymore and mm -hmm. they're looking for another group, but you don't want to get rid of them and they are terrified to say this isn't doing it for me anymore i want to leave sometimes you really do just have to you know break the bond and go your separate gaming ways or not even that right like say bob loves Catan. every time you're going to play Catan, you call bob when you're going to play twilight imperium you don't but maybe you give Bob a heads up. Hey, we're, we're getting together for game, but you know what? We're playing Twilight Imperium. We know it's not your thing, but you know what? Next week, we're going to play Catan. I'll call you up next week. Yeah. And if Bob's just there for the social thing, you can also say, hey, we're playing Twilight Imperium. We're probably going to finish up around 6 a.m. If you want to head over, we can hang out after the game. Maybe not the best ex uh, example. Yeah, I, I realized yeah. that when I, soon, as, <laughs> soon as I went from Twilight Imperium and ending. But, right? uh, yeah, uh, no, but that's definitely it, right? Like, to me, I think you, you first the thing where you suggest is there some way like sit down find out why why do you like this what what is what you like about this thing what can we do to have you try something else are you willing to try something else now the answer might be straight up no and if the answer is no then you're at that point you're at the well this is what we're going to keep doing in this group and if you want to keep participating you, you know we're going this way are you coming with us and you know what? And the compromise could be, you know what? Every other week we'll play your game. Or you know what? We're going to run two sessions of this. We'll go back and play a superhero game. But it, the, it sounds like at that point, it's time for superhero person to sit on the side and get into another group for a couple weeks, right? Yep. And then come back the next time you're running a superhero game. Like, you don't have to break off the friendship just because you don't like the same games, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. Our, our, gaming, <laughs> our gaming cells aren't necessarily tied together with our friendships. Absolutely. And again, it's it's not necessarily, you know, you have to say goodbye to them and you never see them again, but yes. maybe Wednesday, the Wednesday night gaming night isn't going to be their gaming night at your house anymore. They're yeah. going to go find Jane, who's running, you know, uh, Mutants and Masterminds every Wednesday night yep. that they didn't even know about. Um, and 
it was so they go over there and they they play their super they get their super on and then yep. Sunday afternoons is Catan night back at you know Dave's house. Yep. And and the other thing too is there are a lot of people who do this. There are a lot of games. We're obviously not that, or we'd have a very boring podcast. We are not people who only play one game. But there are a lot of people who play one game a lot, a ton. The 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 lifestyle games. It's definitely. A thing that there are people, especially Dungeons and Dragons, there are people who play Dungeons and Dragons and will never play anything else. And there are people who have felt that way since 1974 and still have played Dungeons and Dragons. And there's people who started playing last month who refuse to play anything else, too. There are definite fans of Dungeons and Dragons specifically and pretty much every other RPG out there. Same with board games. There are groups out there there is one here in windsor that gets together every sunday and has well i don't know about right now when things were normal has three to six tables of Catan playing every sunday in someone's backyard and that's what they did they played Catan. they had command tournaments and they love it and there's a good chance your picky eater could probably find these groups there are groups like this now you may be stuck with playing online like it's again depending on where you live like we're in windsor windsor's not that big the fact that there's a group that plays Catan every sunday there's probably a group that plays your favorite game too absolutely that's so many chance for them to join that group yeah and i mean again now that we're you know now that we're in a in a pandemic world or a post-pandemic world or you know however you want to call it um the the online options have only expanded since so if you're a board game player you know we've got an episode that looks at some great options online uh and we still haven't even really delved into the virtual tabletops that deeply with tabletopia Mm -hmm. and tabletop simulator um, if you're an RPG guy, uh, person, there is the Roll Twenties of the world. There's Discord. I mean, you know, we've there are Discords just for Powered by the Apocalypse. Oh yeah, Roll Twenty yeah. has all the options out there. There's a Kickstarter we were discussing earlier that is about to come out. That's for that lighter type of game where it's it, mm-hmm. you don't need all the ha- fancy maps. You get a whiteboard, the cameras, the dice rollers, and some some tools, and you're good to go. Uh, you know, if if you are a picky eater. You have options out there in the world right now that can cater to you. And you, I don't think it's a good thing, but you can continue to be that picky eater for as long as you want if you're willing to go out there and find this, find it. All right, that actually brings me to my next point. Why is the picky eater a problem? Like, especially now, this is looking at the RPG side of things, right? If you have a player in your group that plays a barbarian orc every time that maxes out their strength and maxes out their con and always uses a two-handed sword and buys the monkey grip feet so they can use two two two-handed swords one-handed and always uses the sunder move to start the combat, if they're having fun, so what? Who cares? Like, I see no problem with letting a player do that. Now, back in the day, back in the 80s and 90s growing up, there was this pressure to try new things. And I have no idea where this came from. Like, I, I think just push back again. That people wanted you to try other systems. But there was the, like, people would show up to my table. And Sean always played Thieves, for example. And Sean would show up, and I'm like, great, we're going to play Warhammer. But you know what? You can't play anything from the Thief. You can't play an Outlaw Chief. You can't play a Scoundrel. You can't play a you got some kind of warrior type because you never did. and i forced on to do that and then my other gene is over and i'm like no you are playing like a pacifist monk who's gonna talk a lot and there's no way you're using a weapon i make him do it and you know what that first session kind of went all right and it always fell apart because i was forcing people to play things they didn't want to play or have fun like trying to make them have fun with things they weren't doing So then I let Sean go back to being a thief and let Gene play as whatever cleric of whoever worshiping some holy book. And they are now having a better time. I don't think people playing the same character all the time is bad necessarily, unless it's somehow affecting the group. But like, I have a hard time seeing how that can affect the group unless you have a problem player in the first place, like not just a picky eater. Like if you've got that person who wants to play the, the Wolverine, the Boba Fett, the lone wolf, who's like, we all go into town. Then they're like, no, I refuse to go into town. I go off into the woods or you're playing the, the character who's secretly evil or the thief that Sean didn't play. Thankfully, who was always stealing stuff from the party members, right? Like unless, but that's a different thing. That's, that's a, a problem player, not just a picky eater. That's someone whose fun is to ruin other people's fun. And that's someone you should be kicking out of your group as soon as you can. And maybe they can find another group of loners and they can go have fun somewhere, or maybe they can get into video games. Cause I don't think there's really a place for those people in our hobby anymore. Yeah, no, absolutely. And now good. Just touching back. I think a lot of the pressure or new that we were experiencing 
a lot to do with the group we were playing. We were playing with yeah. the Windsor Board Gaming Society, which was a collective of RPGers and board gamers. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and we were being exposed every week to this group of people who, I think, for good or bad, were playing a lot of different games. And, and yeah. you know, there was an encouragement to either join in with them or try something with them and, and, and experience all these different games, which is, I think, a lot of why we aren't picky eaters. Um, yeah. But I, there was also a little bit of extra pressure where, I mean, there was no reason we couldn't have sat there and just done our own thing and used the space mm -hmm. that became available to us. Um, but we were happy to try a whole bunch of different things, and I think yeah. better for it. I mean, the number of gaming systems I played as a teenager is a lot more than most people of that in that day and age. I and mean, nowadays mm -hmm. it's different to be varieties yeah. out there. But at the time, I mean, you know, most people were playing D&D. Um, or maybe Warhammer if you were in an area where there was a, War a, a GW store, um, but not much else, whereas we had a whole lot of people, a whole lot of different mm -hmm. games, including a lot of really original and complex homebrews. Yeah. Yeah, we had a lot of local game designers, right? Like yeah. like Palladium, where our, our local, were local independent game designers at the time. So Kevin Symbiata, and I am totally forgetting the other person who was part of Palladium back in the day, used to come to Windsor and run their games before they were published, and they had local playtesters here in Windsor. Eric Woodjick, there. I don't know why I couldn't remember that earlier. <laughs> Richard Tohoka lives in Detroit and yeah. would come over here and run his... Uh, uh, what, what did he... He did um, all those... Uh, not necessarily politically correct games nowadays, we'll just say. I, I won't get into actual names, but he, he wrote a bunch of others. We had Eric, and um, that guy wrote, wrote Fist with it, Faster Than Light. The the designer of Bureau 13 showed up and debuted his new game, Stalking the Night Fantastic, right? Like, there was definitely that. But even back at that time, there was a group that played D&D &D and only played D&D. &D. Yep. Uh, Brian used to be the DM, yep. and he used to run for like 16 players at times. And I'll admit, Sean and I were jerk kids and we used to call that the wall of stupidity because they wouldn't play other systems and that kind of gets me back to my point like is there a problem with this right like so what if they want if, if dave only wants to play Catan, you invite dave to Catan night yep. and and have that conversation which i think leads us back to i think the main thing is talking session zero right uh we've talked about session zeros for role-playing games it's now a pretty common thing like it's not weird like, people now know the term. They hear it all the time. But I still think Session Zero should be happening for board game groups. If you have a group and you sit down and you're like, look, we're going to get together every Wednesday and start playing games. And sure, maybe the first couple times it happens ad hoc. But once you're down to once a week we're going to get together, you should sit down and set expectations. Not just for your 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 who brings the food um, how, what type of language we're going to use, what type of content we want on our table, do we allow adult games or not? What kind of games are we going to play? Are we going to play this thing every week or we mix it up? Are we going to play one game until we've mastered it and then move on to something else? Same thing for a role-playing group. So not even just session zero for we're about to start playing our new D&D &D campaign, but hey, we're about to sit down and get our group together and play a game. What are we going to play? Just have that discussion. Is everyone going to, are you going to, hey, Steve, are you going to play your, your Barbarian again? Or is that your plan is to play a Barbarian? Because that's cool. Play your Barbarian, but I need to know so that I can work the story around there being the badass Barbarian. But if you want to try something new, that's cool too, right? Like that conversation. And then make sure everyone has buy-in, right? Um, Phil Vecchione, DNA Phil is famous for saying, you want enthusiastic consent before the end of your session zero. Everyone in that room should be excited for what's gonna happen next. And if you're not, something's wrong and you should try to find out what that is and fix it. Now that might be, I'm sorry, Steve, you know what? We had great time playing Catan, we played every week, we had a lot of fun with Catan, but I'm sick of it. Sean's sick of it, Deanna's sick of it. Well, Deanna wins all the time. I don't even know how you can have fun playing when she wins all the time. We really wanna move on to something else. You know what, there's this great group on Facebook, it's called this, I know they play Catan there, why don't you check them out? Maybe you can start hanging out with them. And you know what, next time we're gonna have a Catan night, we'll give you a call. Or you know what, we're gonna be playing Shadowrun for the next little while. We wanna play these corporates and whatever. And you know what, if you want, like you're welcome to play. You can play a street samurai. They're basically like superheroes. You can get all kinds of cyberware, be all like a lot of ass. But if it's not for you, you know what, next time I'm gonna run Marvel, I'll give you a call. Yeah, no, absolutely. Now the next thing, so the, the, the stage two of this is 
you've got a successful group and you've been going on for a long time. Don't think you can't have another session zero. Session zero yes. mark two. So if you've been playing for a year, maybe there have been some feelings developed between players. Maybe, you know, maybe that, that unspoken, I don't want to play that game because that guy's mm -hmm. a jerk whenever he plays it, has developed over this year. Or maybe some habits of one of the players have, have sort of crept into the game that no one was expecting and everyone's been kind of smiling and nodding about, but it's starting to become a problem. So at, at a, you know, pick a time. It doesn't have to be every six months or every three months or every year, but after a while, uh, maybe you, you f people feel like things are becoming too comfortable. Have a pause. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even have to be a whole night. Have another session zero and talk about the experience for a week open up and see if there are problems, see if there's, if yep. there are conflicts going on and stop it from becoming a bigger problem somewhere else. You don't want a table flip. You don't want to storm yeah. out. You want to catch all that stuff before it gets to that level. Very true. Now I would actually recommend doing this separate from a game night if possible. Like I think if I was going to take my Monday night group, and sit down and have this conversation. I'd be like, you know what? Normally Monday night we get together. Why don't we meet up for pizza down at Roma's just down the street? We'll get a pitcher of beer. We'll sit, talk about it, and then have that conversation. And then maybe if there's time left in the, the night, we'll come back to my place and play a game. Like, I almost want to separate it from the game night just to have it so people know this isn't the regular night. We're, we're talking about things to separate it. I just think that it kind of change the egos, change the mindset. So you're in the mindset of thinking about it instead of in the moment of we're about to play. The only, the only other, the only issue I would be concerned about is if you uh, context shift too much. Uh, you know, if you're all out having a good time having beer and pizzas, maybe Jake and Jen get along great when you're out having pizza and beers. Yeah. But there's a conflict at the table, and so that's the only thing that again somebody has to be aware of. Um, whereas if you say, all right, look, we, uh, you know, we just finished the dungeon, uh, next week before we go back to town, let's take a little while and talk about how things are going. And mm -hmm. then we'll, then we'll start up in the, in the city and, and get going. I, again, that's just, it's all things that you have to watch out for. It's cues. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, more than likely you've probably seen some tension, uh, the, the the key is to make sure you don't ignore it. Make a note somewhere, or, or you know, pay it, pay attention to those little cues that in the past may have gone missed, so that you can take them up on that on your session zero mark too. The other thing too is don't surprise people with this. Like, don't have everyone don't show up <laughs> expecting to play and be like, right. no, nope, sorry, inter interjection. What is that? It's intervention. intervention. Yeah, we're no. having an intervention. We're all sitting down. Yeah. Dave, we don't like. No, don't do that. That's Seriously, yep. that that's that's reality TV thing. That doesn't actually work in real life. Um, another note, we're talking about this, and I bet you most people in their head are thinking we're talking to the DM. That isn't necessarily true. <laughs> this can be for anyone in the group or at the table. You don't have to be the leader. You don't have to be in the leadership role or be the person behind the screen to bring these things up. If there is a problem, you can say, hey, can we, you know, next week, instead of playing, I've noticed there's some tensions in the group and things just aren't quite going the way I think everyone wants them to go. Can we just sit down and have like a, a session Z or whatever you want to call it? We need a term for that. A, a partway session Z, because session zero sounds weird. Session zero mark two, session point five. I don't know. Whatever. Like, like can we have one of those? Because... You know what? Just like, it's not just me. Everyone seems a little on edge, and we don't seem to be having a, a, a reboot season session, reboot. Session, that's, session reboot. That's that's not a bad session reboot. That's not a bad term. There's probably someone out there. If I ask the the misdirected Mark crew, they have a term for this already. Seems like there should be a, uh, a an inter a, intermission. I think is probably another good word yeah. for it. Let's have an intermission, and you know, let's all go to the lobby, get ourselves a drink, and sit down and <laughs> talk about talk about the game. But overall, um, we kind of covered a lot and we kind of wandered all over. I think your, your first thing, in my opinion, is, is it a problem? Right? Like, like where, where is this coming from? This is actually a problem. It, like, you know, if you can play that one game that the person really likes, you play it every other week and you play other games the other week. And that's a nice, simple compromise that most people can probably get behind. And the weeks you don't play the game, they don't show up. It's not really a problem then, right? Or if, again, the person likes playing a certain character type and it's not interfering with anyone else's fun, who cares? Let them play the, their character type and have their fun. 
like I, nowadays today's modern role playing now if they only want combat and hate the role playing parts that's fine if they shut up during the role playing parts and have fun during the combat parts and let the role players have fun that's perfectly normal in most role playing groups people like those things on different levels it's a slider but if they complain every time there's a role playing scene then you've got a problem then you're not just dealing with a pick eater you're dealing with a problem player yeah. And that is something we've talked about dealing with problem players in the past. And that mostly boils down to having an adult conversation, finding the root cause of the problem, finding a solution or parting ways. And and it's not just RPGs that that can happen in uh, a yes. player who will only ever play their game if they get to be the blue meeple. Yes. You know, that's there's that's a problem player. <laughs> uh, and it's it's the same. So sort, again, it's the same sort of thing. If, if that's the problem, who cares? All right, fine. You play blue. Well, I mean, unless it becomes a point where you know, I can't play this yeah. game because you didn't get the blue meeples when you kickstarted it. Uh, you know, you know, there's, there's, again, there, there's a possibility uh, that, that you know this this can exist in both board game and RPG. Um, it's a little more obvious in some ways in, in, than in others, depending on which which side of the RPG board game you're on. But mm -hmm. uh, but problem players are problem players, and that's different than someone who's just, just picky, picky and yeah. you know you find you find little ways to adapt so here's another way to think of it gaming is a social situation and should be treated as such at all times it is the exact same as doing something else i personally like to think of gaming like um uh being on a sports team being in in a league on on a team and i usually bring that up when i'm talking about things like my work not giving me time off to go to game night but giving else, someone else time off to go play ball but not only that, it's you have obligations you to the team, to the people you play with, and everyone needs to be on the same page. So another way to look at it is for picky eaters, and this one I particularly wanted to use because of the term picky eater, is you just stop game night and you decide to order pizza. What happens? It's the exact same social situation as trying to pick which game to play. You're going to have that person that's like, no, no, we get pepperoni and cheese because that's what I like. I want pepperoni and cheese. That's all I ever get. And then you have someone else that's like, well, I'm sick of pepperoni and cheese. I want to try something else. Yeah, why don't you ever try something else? Well, haven't you tried anchovies? And the other person's like, no, no, I only like pepperoni. It's the same situation. How would you handle that? Maybe this time you order pepperoni and cheese. Maybe you get a pepperoni and cheese for them and order another pizza. So you play Catan, then you play another game afterwards. It's the exact same social situation where you have one player wants one thing and a group of other people will want something else and how you would handle it on your team and i want to go up to bat i want to play first and but you're not that good at first but i want to play first or i want we're not even even worse than pizza you finish game night and go where should we go for dinner and everyone's going to throw something out and there's going to be the person who wants to go to taco bell because you always go to taco bell and then there's going to be for no i want to go to a sit down restaurant right it's the, it's the that whole conversation is going to be the same thing it's just you're talking games instead of food or you're talking uh character roles instead of positions on the field yep oh, I, again we we all deal with these kinds of situations all the time uh who in their family doesn't do the where are we going for dinner tonight and yep. and you know depending on how many people are in the family you get x plus two answers um or everyone says i don't care and you still have to make a decision um it's the same thing as board games and rpg and and how you deal with those solutions all the yeah. same problem solving it is it's the same problem it's the same people skills required like it's i don't know it's like i said there's this mentality that like game nights is like sacred cow that have to be treated a certain way and it's special and yes game night's great but it's just another night that you're getting together with your friends your family or your local people your neighbors to do something together yep yes deanna pointed out a really good line picky eater etiquette just because i hate pizza doesn't mean you can't eat it and some of this is on the picky eater. Like, if people are willing to compromise yep. and willing to play your game and willing to let you play your barbarian this campaign, compromise. Like, like be a be an adult about it. If you got to do it this time, let them do their fun thing next time. That's how we, how society works, and how we get to work together and get anything accomplished in this world. Another, because we mean, all I, have our own opinions. And again, a, gr a great example is a, a vegan, right? If you're ordering pizza. The vegan isn't going to eat your pepperoni and cheese, but they aren't going to stop you from eating your pepperoni and cheese. And maybe if everyone's going out to dinner and 
everyone wants to go to this restaurant that doesn't have vegan options. Well, maybe they skip out that week. And then next week, you go to a place that has great vegan or everyone goes and everyone eats vegan yep. the next week. Oh. And if your vegan is the type that won't let you eat pepperoni pizza in front of them and just berate you for doing so all night, maybe, maybe it's time to stop hanging out with that vegan. Yep. No offense to vegans out there. We no. actually know, I know quite a few local gamers who happen to be vegans. And they've had pizza in my basement and did not complain while I ate my pepperoni. All right. Well, I think that's it for our suggestions on what to do when gaming with a player reluctant to try new things. I'm going to head over to the lobby and see if the awesome folk gathered there have anything to add. I see quite a bit going by in the lobby tonight, so this should be a good one. Absolutely. It's been... Do you uh, have anything actually saved up, or should I just start scrolling back? Because I uh, saw some nice... Well, I know uh, uh, Ter Terton, who has been, has been talking a little bit about, uh, you know, some of the problems they were experiencing, which led to these questions. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, again, this, this player, you know, not necessarily the mathy person. And there are other problems with mutants and masterminds, okay. even though they're, they're a player. So at, at some point, it sounds like the, the discussion needs to happen. And, and there yeah. needs to be a discussion between the entire group or even just the host and this one player uh, to really sort of suss out some things and say, look, if we're going to continue, there needs to be a little bit more flexibility. Or, or again, the, the opposite side. Is this person playing? I get it. Like, if you don't want to play superhero games, that's different. But yeah, yeah. when you're playing superhero games, they always play the same character. So what? Yeah. Like, no, I honestly do not see a problem with that. But if you're sick of playing superhero games, point that out. Like, explain it. Say, hey, you know what? We're really sick of playing superhero games. We're going to finish it off. And again, I suggest trying to find a game that scratches the same itch. Like, if you're going to go to D&D, &D, play 4E. Because that gives you these amazing powers and lets you do amazing things and jump across the boards and kill things in single hits and do all kinds of neat, funky, almost magic-like stuff or actually magic-like stuff. If you want to have that slight feel and you, but you want to play a fantasy game, that's going to be as close as you can get. Now, he, on the flip side, he asks, you know, am I the jerk for trying to introduce new things and new ideas? And the answer is no, but yeah. have you talked about it? Right. And again, it's just like if you want to introduce something new is the same. You need to have that same discussion is if you don't want to introduce something new. Uh, yeah. Either way, the discussion needs to be had. We're going to stick doing this and we're never going to change playing Catan, uh, doing anything except playing Catan is a discussion that needs to be had as much as we're going to play Catan this week, Max masks next week and Warhammer 40K the week after that. Right. Mm -hmm. They're all discussion and and how you approach that with the group and maybe changes well the other thing too is it just you perhaps you're the picky eater maybe the rest of the group's perfectly happy playing superhero games like crazy and I, I, I'm, I'm still calling a picky eater but maybe you're the picky eater who always wants to try something different right meanwhile they're perfectly happy with the game that's been going now if you're the dm and they're the players i get how this could be a problem but maybe it's time to let someone else try GMing while you go try another game with another group. Or if you are sick of GMing superhero games, try playing. Play, be a player. Because especially in a superhero game, there are so many options for trying different types of characters. Like, you pretty much infinite amount of options there from the 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 loner which is probably as i said not the not necessarily the best choice in most rpgs to the space alien who doesn't understand earth to the guy who lives down the street that suddenly has superpowers right like those are all very different ways to play um so if it's just you maybe maybe you are the picky you're like like maybe I'm, i don't want to say the problem but maybe it's you that needs to look and go you know what the rest of the group's having a good time and in that case what i would probably do is continue to run the game for that group but try to find a side gig to keep my my taste like this is what happens with deanna and i on it when when all the normal game nights are going on not when we're in quarantine is deanna likes to play the same games multiple times she doesn't like learning new games all the time i like to try new things so what would happen was when we play at home we uh, this is games we played stuff my Monday night group Deanna loves love and we play them and then I go out to play events at places like the CG Realm and I break out all my new stuff to play with strangers and sometimes Deanna joins in and sometimes we find a new favorite and we start playing that on Monday nights as well but that's my compromise is Deanna wants plays of the same game so I'll play the same game with her but when I'm out and about I go play around right and I play lots of games with different people 
Whereas I don't actually know what it feels like to play the same game because I go down to Windsor yes. and no matter what, it's a new game every time. Except for party, uh, you know, party nights. If, if it's New Year's or something, yeah. then then usually some some games that other people have played before will come out and do that. But uh, yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I don't understand the the concept of playing the new uh, the same game multiple times. That's just strange yeah. to me. <laughs> I don't. I I do both. I I am in. Uh, I'm poly gamerous. I'll play the same game multiple times. I'll play a game once and never go back. And I would happily, if I'm playing four games in a night, I generally prefer them to be four different games. Doesn't necessarily have to be something new. It, my I, my perfect night, like going out to to uh, CD Realm, would be playing two games I already know and trying one new one. Would be a good night for me, because then I get to show off a couple new games and try them with new people, and then I get to try something else. And as Wilk Chamberlain puts out, of course, that first play is extreme anyway. So but we see, can't. That's, uh... that's actually one of the reasons why I think I, given a perfect world, if if I did live in Windsor and was was able to uh, to be around more, I would actually prefer two games. So a four game night for me would be two games of X and two games of Y because you get the extreme game out of the play. A lot of times yeah. I really, I, I play off the, I don't, I don't game, read yeah. rules. I play uh, the, on BGA. I jump in. I don't read the rules. when someone invites me to a new game, I just play and I mess it up horribly. And then the next time I'm like, Oh, okay. So if I do this and this and this, I'm going to try and develop a strat an actual strategy for this game. Um, and, and but that's this, the two game system is a little more conducive to the way I just play games and and I because yeah, I experiment more. The the problem is there's not a lot of games I want to play twice in a row, <laughs> especially well, and, long and time so is a big it's, thing. It's I mean, you know, it's I don't time I don't want to sit down and play what I like, Mars twice in a row. Yeah, what I like is the same game two weeks in a row. See, the, so that's what I would do, right? I would have two games I know and one new game, and then next week that first game would be the last game from last week. Like, that's what I like to do is break it up. But again, I also have the advantage of pretty much gaming twice a week. So the, the, I can do that, right? Whereas, like, there's, like, a Pulsar, right? When I taught you Pulsar, that was not a game where we were going to sit down and play a second game right in a row. Oh. It's just not that kind of game, right? And most of the games I enjoy are like that. Now, Exchange, which we'll be talking about in a bit, happily, yeah, let's play two. Let's play one, get it, and now play again. So yep. it, it very much depends on the amount of ruling. Whereas, you know, the first time we played Azul, uh, I think we played it yes. like four times sitting in the coffee yep. shop that day. Or Garento. Like yep. Garento, I think we played five times in a row, right? Uh, I think I only played it twice, but that's because I also played uh, the new Azul that night, and I played Richard's new, uh, yep. you know. The, Richard's the, uh, boxing, boxing yep. night in Canada. Yeah, yeah. All right, we got anything else in the chat before uh, we move on? I think uh, we covered a lot of it. We were sort of dipping into the chat room. Yeah, as we I was kind of watching as it was going so, by. Uh, Will Chamberlain's getting Sanctum. We were talking about that in the um, feedback. Really neat game. I think you'll like it. Yeah. Um, more complaints about Terraforming Mars. Uh, so Danielle mentions a friend who is way too competitive and will take over co-op games. Yeah, but that's talk... still better than playing a competitive game with them. Right. And so, we talked. We talked about uh, about uh, the the quarterbacking problems. Yeah. and issues like that it's it's something that that's one of those things where you need to sit down and, and maybe uninvite them from the you know as a group say look we, we if you're going to continue this behavior we're not we have invite you. had to have that conversation with overly competitive players there are, there are a couple locals that take things far too seriously but again session zero right whenever i start teaching a game when i sit down at a table with someone who's new again i do a lot of public events i will point out just as a heads up all of us are here just have fun we're here to play the game i'm gonna play to win but i don't care if i win and lose just so you know this isn't a competition there's no money on the table and i start every game with a new player with some kind of variant of that speech just to set that expectation look i don't want arguments over who's winning a game or overtaking a spot on the board that's not what i'm interested in when i come out to play games and i will present that like as a mini session zero right like just before the game starts again this is board games not rpgs rpgs i have a totally different speech when i start those which is all about you're going to work as a team and there are no evil players and you're not going to steal from other people as i kind of mentioned during the main topic and that is something i used to do at the start of every D&D &D 4E um, Living Forgotten Realms game. 
I would point out, look, you are playing D&D. The tropes of D&D is you are the heroes. So when the farmer comes to you and goes, my God, my chicken is missing, you go, oh, I will help you find your chicken because that's one of the tropes of D&D. And we are playing high fantasy D&D. So that's how I expect you to play this game. And that's how the story is going to go. And trust me, I'll make finding that chicken interesting. And I give a speech like that at the start of every D&D game. And I think that's important. And not enough people do it. Again, it's this whole... I, too nervous to rock the boat, too nervous to say something. I don't know. I don't know what that mentality is, but it needs to go away. Yeah, I, I, it's interesting because, you know, you you have this, you know, you will play competitively, but not aggressively. Yes. I think it's, it's really kind of the, the best way to do it. Whereas I, I struggle in the other direction. Whereas, again, because, again, a lot of it has to do with the fact that most of the time when I'm sitting down, it is a great, you know, I haven't seen you in person yep. in ages. I haven't seen a lot of other people at the table. I haven't had a chat with D or Ian or whoever. And so, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to not ag aggressively try to not win, but yeah. I'm really not necessarily playing competitively even. I mean, right. you know, again, I know what it is. And if I, if I see if, if, I, if an opportunity to play really well and do something cool jumps out at me, I will take it. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> no, I think with you, once you know a game, you become more competitive than I am. Possibly. Again, like I, I think I, once you know it, like once you're at that level where it's, we're yeah, not just hanging out, we're going to play Part of the problem game. is I don't, I don't get to that with too many games though. So I, oh, don't, yeah. I don't really see that in myself. True. Oh. Yeah, it's been a while. Um, um, so just Deanna's got a good comment here. As a picker eater. So I want to say is the person 99% of the time turns down certain styles of board games. Hello, I hate manual decks. I'm not being, I'm taking my toys and going home. I usually try to get across. You folk can play whatever game you dislike and I can move over to that other game over there or I can entertain myself on my phone, no harm, no foul. And that is the, the kind of picky eater you want, right? So it's like picky eater etiquette. And again, gets into, we talked about, the, the the vegan thing just because I hate a thing doesn't mean you have to hate it too. Knowing knowing you're the picky eater can go a long way. Yes. And sometimes that's the only way you know you're a picky eater is that other people tell you. Um and so and that's part of that whole don't be afraid to call people out, right? Yeah. Hey. Again, you don't have to be a jerk about yeah. it. Yeah. Hey hey Graham, did you realize you do this? Cool. Let's uh let's find a way around it. You know and that it why? Like, is there a reason you need to play this type of character all the time? You realize it's kind of disruptive to the rest of the group, right? Just having those conversations. I admit it. It's not easy, right? Like, here we are saying this, and it sounds like, oh, yeah, sure. Just show up to your game group and do it. I realize I have some social anxieties. I realize the actual, when the people are there in the table in front of you, it may not be the easiest thing to do. But again, one bad night, one tough, hard experience can remove a lot of heartache going forward. Alrighty. Well, so I, that's it for our main topic tonight. Remember, you can find lots of gaming topics and advice like this over on the blog at tabletopbellhop.com. Just click on Gaming Advice at the top of the page. Uh, finally, just a reminder, if you've got a game or game night question like the two we answered tonight, head over to the website, click on Ask the Bellhop, or fire me off email at questions at tabletopbellhop.com. 